and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your Call, brought to you by Quit Now. This is where we have a look at six contentious decisions across the previous round of football. And as he joins me every Tuesday afternoon, who better to have in the driver's seat beside me than the umpire's manager, Jeff Geish. And welcome, Geish. Always good to be here, Wayne. Well, let's get straight into it. And if you'd like to contribute, we would certainly encourage that. You can do that one of two ways, via Twitter or Facebook. You pick out a decision, you send it through to us via these two addresses, and we'll pick out one from Twitter and Facebook each week and make sure that we address one of those decisions for you. Let's kick it off, Geish. Free, uh, Fremantle taking on Brisbane. It involved uh, Polkinghorne and Clancy Pearson. It's fair to say we don't want to see this come into our game. No, it's quite dangerous. And we can see here that uh, Pierce goes for the ball and Polkinghorne comes in. He's quite close to him and he pushes him in the, the lower back, shunts him, tunnels him, however you'd like to call it. It was probably not far away from being, you know, referred to the match review panel because the player was in the air. Fairly strong force there. Free kick sufficed for that, but wouldn't want to see any more force than that. So it's really down to a bit more force constitutes uh, rough play. Yeah, and reportable the incident. And the fact that he didn't run a long distance to make the contact probably saved him a little bit there. But as you can see, it was dangerous. Player was in the air, and he becomes very vulnerable in that situation. So very pleased with the free kick. All right, uh, the second decision we'll have a look at. Big win for the Kangaroos against the Cats. The last game on Sunday, it involved Hamish McIntosh. Crowd, the crowd was very loud. Was that a defence for Tommy Lon Lonigan? Uh, not really. But uh, this is a tricky one. It's not as clear-cut as what it may seem, but we've deemed this to be an unwarranted 50 metres based around the fact you can see the graphic there. When McIntosh took the mark, he then travelled some probably seven or eight metres forward of the mark. Now, when a player goes forward of the mark like that, the umpire can interpret it as play on, but in this case, clearly not playing on. He was claiming the mark, momentum carried him forward. Lonigan's actually entitled to not let him run forward. So you can see Lonigan actually look at the umpires if to say, hey, mate, he's going forward of the mark. I need to claim him. So he did claim him, and what the umpire should have done is just bring him back, say, hey, back behind your mark, I'll reset and we'll go from there. So the 50 metre was tough on um, you know, Lonigan in that yep. situation. OK, let's stay with the 50 metres, though. Different game, Richmond taking on Melbourne on the weekend. Bad day for the Demons, and uh, on this occasion, they got a, a rare free kick going their way. Yeah, and look, this is pretty clear and obvious one, I suppose. Um, Just one for stupidity, really. No, not a forceful incident. Yeah, and I'm not saying Rance was stupid in this, but it was just clumsy. And it Watts took the mark, then a delay, delayed reaction by Rance in that the, he made contact to the back of his head. And once the mark's been completed, any contact to the head after that is going to be a, a secondary infringement, therefore 50 metre penalty applies. All right, next decision, this one. I think this is a really contentious one and will continue to be until players get their technique right. And this is yeah. the sling tackle involved. Yeah. Lance Franklin. Yeah. I mean, that's an automated action, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. After years of training. Yeah. But it's a very grey area. Yeah. And look, we, we all know now the sling tackle is in vogue. Um, look, we all know there Lance didn't um, double action or ping him into the surface. He did he did put him into the uh, to the ground with a, with a reasonable level of force, but nothing way over the top. In fact, he probably uh, pulled it back a little bit. So, a uh, free kick for a sling tackle, but it's not one of those ones where we thought the extra effort and the dumping was involved, and um, we deemed it as a free kick only. Just before we move on, though, what happens if the tackle to Paul Pleasure, Jason Paul Pleasure, hits his ground, hits his head on the ground, and he's knocked out? That's a completely different set, set of situation, though. Yeah, correct. That would be a different si set of situations. So there's not a lot of difference. The no. point I'm making: there's yeah. not a lot of difference between yeah. a good tackle and a fair one, as opposed to the one that's unfair, and you could have a suspension coming yeah, your way. Correct. And, and Lance obviously gets the benefit of the doubt in that, based around the fact that um, he didn't drive his head into the ground. Took him into the ground, but not the head first. No injury. Player got straight up, so just need to be aware. No sling tackles. Good to see our great players not getting rubbed out for a fair tackle. Let's continue on. Uh, illegal shepherding in the marking contest. Yes, yes. Yes, and we can see this one here. This is fairly classical in that uh, we see young Grimes going back. He's got a teammate coming in to try and attempt to mark the ball. Clark is trying to mark the ball. Grimes looks back, finds his opponent, puts his arm out. And at no stage was Grimes really ever going to try and mark the ball. His aim was to protect, block uh, Clark out of the contest, which he did effectively. Mm. Umpire paid a terrific free kick for that. They've got to have good awareness there, and that was a very good free kick. So if uh, Dylan Grimes had have gone up and pretended to be going for the mark, different story? Well, you know all about it, Wayne. And yes, if the player does disguise it really well, keeps his eyes on the ball and doesn't jump in player in front of the player and look at him, he'll probably get away with it. But as soon as he looks, turns his body and goes back, he's in a little bit of trouble. All right. Now, I know that this is a week old, but we felt that it was necessary to go back and revisit it because there was an article written in The Age on the weekend which may have confused the situation with this decision regarding Adam McPhee. 
Yes, this, this decision was reported in the age and we have had a few queries about it since, so it's probably worth um, just clearing it up. We can see McPhee take the ball at top pace, take four or five paces, carry the ball probably seven to ten metres and get tackled. Now that's deemed to be a prior opportunity. When a player's had a prior opportunity, he must then legally dispose of the ball by kick or handball. And as we can see from that, after carrying the ball seven or eight metres, didn't dispose of the ball correctly and a correct free kick for prior opportunity. Mm. Well, there you go. Hopefully that uh, cleared that situation up. Uh, just before we do wrap things up, though, an umpire broke his leg last weekend, a goal yeah. umpire. Yeah, we did. Uh, uh, one of our uh, goal umpires, James Savage, from up in the ACT um, in the game at Blacktown, actually got a little knock on the side of his leg from uh, Phil Davis from Greater West Sydney, and he broke the bone on the side of his leg. The pleasing thing, though, is... Um, he showed a little bit of discomfort, but he stayed out there for the entire game. So maybe goal umpires are becoming the toughest people in football. Who said they weren't tough? Have a great week. Thanks, Goosh. And we'll see you next week on It's Your Call, brought to you by Quit Now. See you then.